There we go. We are live on YouTube. Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome to another Self Love Talks. And thank you to all my new subscribers as well. I've noticed the numbers have gone up probably from the Laura Eisenhower interview. You guys love that one. So thank you so much for all your beautiful comments. I read all of them. And thank you for subscribing and thank you for sharing as well. This community here is really growing and it really warms my heart and touches my heart. So it's great to be connected to all of you. Thanks for being here. And this evening, I'm really excited because as you've seen most of my guests, not all, but most of my guests, guests are women. And we have Jason Heston, little son tonight. He's definitely not a female. We definitely have a, a very cool guy in the studio. So I'm very happy to welcome in a divine masculine to the Self Love Talks. Welcome, Jason, little son. Thank you, thanks for having me. And you're a, a, sh a shaman and an energy healer, right? Yes, yes, yes I and am. You've got, and you've got a very cool story about that, how that happened. And I'd love it if uh, in a little bit that you're gonna share with that, with everybody how that your life transformed and what was uh, where you were before. But before we do that, I just wanna say, I'm, as you know, guys, I've been talking a lot about New Earth and a lot about Divine Feminine and a lot about self-love and the transformation for this time. And so I'm really curious, especially with so much conversation around Divine Feminine, what our man, Jason Harrison, has to say on that and, and what Jason feels about the feminine, masculine, that whole uh, energy what should we say, uh, balance or harmonizing or what that means, Jason. So um, I'd love it if we dig into that a little bit. And also what you have to share with people of how they can maybe not just navigate or survive what we're going through, but actually make it an incredible opportunity for them to experience a whole another level of their being, right? Because I know that that's something that you know something about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, particularly with the COVID situation, I feel like this is an opportunity when, when you have to sit with yourself, which most people don't even like to do. It forces you to reevaluate re your life and, you know, your destiny. And that's a good thing. And I think on a broader scale, that's what COVID is doing for the entire world. It's like it's taking us through our collective dark night in the soul in a sense. But it won't be a dark night in the soul for the people who have already been doing the work. But for the people who haven't been tuning into their inner world, who haven't truly been embracing who they truly are, this is like a dark night of the soul for them. You know? And I've experienced the dark night of the soul. And as, as painful as it is, it's very necessary for you to get broken down all the way so you can get to the essence of who you truly are if you haven't accepted who you truly are. So tell us about that, Jason. Tell us what happened to you. Yeah, well, um, you know, I've always been very observant my entire life, you know, and um, people would come to me and ask me about their situations and ask my take on how I felt about what they were going through. And... Um, in 2009, something happened. Well, let me back up. In 2007, I was in the music industry and I walked away because I just felt like this wasn't really my calling like I thought it was. And something told me to start meditating and I got led to um, reading certain books, led to other books. And then in 2009, an accident happened. I had a truck driving job and I, you know, I started to tune into myself. I started getting messages. And I, had a, I got a message that said, you need to quit this job. I didn't listen to it. I said, I'm going to pay my bills and my rent. This doesn't make sense. So the next week, I crashed. I fell asleep on the road. And um, I lost everything. I lost my job, my apartment, my car. I got stripped down to nothing. Mm -hmm. And I had to sit with myself as I was recovering from the injuries. And while I was sitting with myself, I started to awaken or recognize things inside of me that was dormant, certain gifts of tuning in and getting messages. It started to get deeper and stronger and I started to cultivate it. And that's when I started sharing my insight on social media, like around 2010 is when I started really just sharing online about my experiences and things that started coming to me. 
you know, and I felt like I needed to share this with the world. So that was the beginning of me actually coming out as a teacher. So I was teaching and learning at the same thing, at the same time, rather. And I'm still teaching and learning. You know, I'm always learning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it's a never ending process. Yeah. Yeah. But whatever I learned that benefits myself, I share with the people. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's my responsibility to do so. And also, if you're anything like me, which I, I feel that you are, you kind of can't help yourself as well. When you're when you're in that kind of intensity of inspiration and you're learning and it's blowing your mind and you're having all these, you know, accelerations or expansions and, and new things. And it's like it, you kind of can't help it. And I, I, I get a sense that that was always your destiny, you know, because even before you were putting it out there and, and sharing and you, you had that loss, you had that trauma you were the guy that people come to. So it was already naturally something in a, in you, but you just hadn't realized it. And it sounds like life was going, Jason, you're not going to realize who you truly are and what your real purpose is if you keep driving trucks and you keep being in the music industry. Right. So flip lanes. <laughs> right. Right. And it's like, if you're not listening. And, you know, isn't that relevant, Jason? Do you think, uh, what if more people listened to that little voice? or to that message that was coming through? I think it's rel relevant for everyone, but I don't think most people have cleared their mind enough to be able to be open enough for that message that comes from a higher part of themselves. You know, many people, they don't know how to get out of their minds. You know, it's so much going on, you know, your job and your relationship, and nobody really takes enough time to really sit with themselves and just feel. Because sitting with yourself and feeling and just allowing brings the insight. You tune into yourself. We haven't been taught how to do that. You know, many people think that that's weird. That's woo woo, you know, the spiritual stuff. But when I don't know what to do, I literally just sit with myself in silence and I open myself up for insight and inspiration. How do you do that? Have you got a, a technique or like a special yeah, I, thing? I literally, I literally just sit with myself and get out of my mind and feel it and sit with my energy and just sit there, you know? And, and how do you do that? How do you connect your energy? Um, I just, here's the thing. This is why I tell people it's very important to start meditating because meditation is like the beginning of getting to the point where you can feel your own energy. Most people can't feel their own energy. They have no idea what that means. So meditation is like training wheels that gets you to a point where you can come out of your mind because most people don't know how to come out of their mind. So if you don't know how to come out of your mind, you can't feel your energy because all your energy is right here. It's limited to your focus of the energy here. But when you can come, meditation helps you pull your attention into your body. And when you pull your attention into your body, into your heart, this is where you can start to feel your energy and from this place is where things can come in where you can feel and get inspiration all of the great artists i can guarantee you whether we're talking about uh people people in sports um you know we talk about people like bruce lee and jimmy hendrix and people like this and muhammad ali they were great not because they trained physically they were great because they were able to tap into something higher than themselves and channel it. When you see Jimi Hendrix play the guitar, nobody plays the guitar like Jimi Hendrix. He didn't even train. He didn't take lessons how to play the guitar. He was just a raw guitarist that just played from the soul. It was not a mental um, mm. activity. He was playing what he felt. And this is the same thing I do with anything that I do when I'm this interview with you. I'm not in my mind right now. I'm speaking from here, right? I'm allowing the feeling of what I need to say to show up. And anyone who's great, that's how they operate. These people we call geniuses. These are people who allow something higher than themselves. They become a vessel for the higher part of themselves to show up in the moment. And we all have the ability to do this. We're all geniuses in our own right if we can get our minds out of the way. I agree. I, I massively agree. And especially as a soul reader, I literally see people's genius and most of it's not embodied. And they think it's something they have to go out and get or piece together or put together from books or formulate. And it really isn't. It's something much more innate, much more open and innocent. And isn't it a good job 
that Jimi Hendrix and other geniuses that we know and love didn't have that same excuse when they had the little voice, oh, you should quit your job, Jimmy, and go and play on stages. You know, he listened to that little voice and then saying, oh, yeah, but, you know, I might lose my job or I might lose my income or I might not be able to pay the bills, right? Because those yeah buts come in. And I wonder what was your yeah but, you know, when you had your your message come through to you uh, the week yeah, before. My, my but was how I'm going to pay these bills. My rent, my car note, that was my butt. <laughs> so that's why. I you have to get your I'm butt missing. out of the way, don't you? Get your big butt out of the way of your destiny. <laughs> I, I got knocked on my butt. Okay, so now mm. I listen to the messages when they come. I've learned my lesson. Yeah. You know? So um, it's, it's a, you know, in people's defense, it's a very challenging thing to take that position when you've been trained all of your life to operate just from here. Now, I don't want to discredit the mind because the mind is an important tool as well. We need logic, which is the masculine principle. You know, tapping into that higher self, that's more the feminine principle, feeling, right? So we need both. Sometimes you need to use logic, you know, but sometimes you need to feel for the answer. Sometimes you need to fill it out. So it can get tricky on how you shift in between each logical or uh, the method of filling it out as well. So you got to know when to use um, which perspective. So how do people know? I mean, you're talking now going into this is a masculine principle, that's a feminine principle. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to us? I'd love to know, Jason, for you as a male in this masculine body, in this what's been a very masculine world for a long time where it's very mind orientated, very logic orientated. And then here are you and you're channeling spirit and you're listening to spirit and you're feeling and, you know, what does it mean for you at the moment in these times to be a man, to be a male? Do you relate to yourself as divine masculine? Can you connect to that or does that, you know, how does that sit with you? I mean, I can relate to myself as divine masculine. Um, I don't want to get too caught up on labels. I mean, I consider myself a shaman and things of that nature. But um, the only reason why I consider myself a shaman is because of the way I do my work. You know, I, I can tap into the Akashic Records. I don't, I just do it. If I'm working with a client, I'll just go there. It's not like I'm presetting, I'm going to do this. I do what, what I need to do in the moment. And that's the shaman work where you're, open to the present moment and you do what needs to be done. Sometimes I'll do something I've never done before mm. because it's something outside of me that's coming in to guide me to do something I need to do. You know, and it's hard for someone who just lives in the mind and works just from logic to understand that principle. Yeah. You know, it's very hard to, what do you mean? Like sometimes when I'm doing events, when uh, something occurs, let's say I'm doing we do the heart circle vortex, which is a group energy healing session. And sometimes in a circle, someone is real tight and they're not letting the circuit, people hold hands to create a circuit so the energy go around in a circle. Somebody in a circle may be tense and, and holding up the, the energy from going all around so it gets stuck so that the people don't open up. So, you know, one time when that happened, I was noticing someone was holding up the energy from flowing through the circle. So I just started channeling tones and i've never done that before i just started doing it and everybody just started following my tone naturally and then the energy opened up and everybody cracked open so yeah. will i do that again maybe but it's not like i'm using that as a preset some things i do use as a preset on a logical end but some things just happen in the moment so it's a combination of both I use my logic when I recognize, like, for example, if I'm working with a person on self-mastery coaching, when I see a, a human behavioral pattern that I recognize, now I can use my logic to unpack it because I know this pattern well. So I can logically tell you from that position, this is what this is. And I guarantee you, you probably do this right and this happened. Yes. How do you know? Because I recognize that pattern. Mm -hmm. But if I'm speaking with someone one on one and they're telling me something I don't I can't recognize a pattern. I just allow myself to be open to feel what it is. And then I can feel and I just wait for it. I wait for it. I wait for it. Here it is. This is what this is. You know? So I'm using both principles, logic and intuition. 
Mm. Logic, which is a masculine principle, and intuition, which is the feminine principle. So what would you say to somebody who's got stuck in a pattern? And maybe they don't even see that they're stuck in a pattern, you know, because I can think of people, and some of them are very close to me, that, and it's always the hardest, like, you know, doing some similar work to you, different way of doing it, but tapping in, tuning in. And I can help all these other people, but then there's those people that are so close that I'm just Tara, you know, they wouldn't come and, you know, have a session or allow me to guide them or help them. I'm just, I'm too close. Um, so I can think of some of those people. And, and I really reckon there's quite a lot of people out there who are stuck in patterns and maybe don't even realize that they're stuck in patterns. They just don't feel good or things aren't working out for them. So like, how would you, do you have any, any wisdom or advice you can share with people about how to a recognize a pattern for themselves and actually admit it because it's quite humbling isn't it to kind of go oh yeah well here's yeah. the thing <laughs> you can't help anyone recognize a pattern if they're not invested in self-improvement now here's the dilemma when people are close to me and this is what i'm working on within myself because i'm just like you i can see people's souls i can see your mm -hmm. potential that you can't see within yourself so one of my things that i used to do that i'm getting over doing is trying to push people into their potential. Yeah, yeah. Which it's, it's a loving intention behind it, but it's not the right thing to do because they may not be ready to step into that potential in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. So I have to respect their path, you know, which is very challenging because when I, especially when I see something in somebody I love, I, I can, I'm like, if they can just get this one mm -hmm. thing, their life would change in such a beautiful way and they would show up in the world in such a powerful way but i can't want it for them more than they want it for themselves and that's the dilemma with me it's like i want people to step into their power more than they want to step into their power so i have to fall back so if someone is close to me and i recognize a pattern and i bring it up i'll bring it up and if they don't ask more questions or don't even want to consider looking at it i have to let it go i have to you know i used to really Push and push and push. Yeah, it keeps you in the back. It, you know, I'm just sitting here and I'm thinking, I wonder if God feels like that. Because a lot of people are like, where is God when I need him? And, you know, I'm like, well, maybe God's waiting for you to start helping yourself. God's been trying to help you. But, you know, you can't impose your will over someone else. You can't change someone uh, just to fit your own, you know, desires or narrative. I just saw God in you for a moment then Jason I was like I wonder if I wonder if God feels like that when he's looking at humans if you know he you know <laughs> I believe I believe that God has set up this reality to where it gives feedback to show you where you need to go but if you don't know how to recognize because I teach people how to read circumstances so when things happen in my life I can actually decode it the energetic mm -hmm. principle of what's happening we're not taught to look at reality in that way. And the energetic patterns are the true reality of life. You know, so for instance, um, let's see if I can give you an example. Like when, if, if I'm attempting to do a business deal, for example, with someone, and it's just not flowing right, and I'm trying to push it and push it, that circumstance is showing me this is not the right partners to do business with. If it doesn't happen organically and if it doesn't feel good, if it doesn't naturally just evolve in a way that feels good, that's how the um, program of life gives you feedback. Like, no, this is not the way. If you have to push something too hard, that's not the way. You know, so, and there are other things that happen in life that give me insight to yes or no. Like um, I used to have a board in my closet, a chalkboard, and I would write down where the energy is going in my life. So I would write down all the opportunities that are presenting themselves, right? And I would say, okay, this is an opportunity. This is an opportunity. It looks like the energy is going here. And then if the energy stopped moving towards that opportunity, I would erase it off the board. And then I would look and see, okay, if I was moving towards that opportunity, maybe the opportunity wasn't what I was supposed to get out of that path. But there was something along that path I was supposed to get, whether it was a person I was supposed to meet or, or a revelation. You know, the magnetism that pulls you towards something that you're interested in, what you're going towards might not be 
the goal of the path. So we have to leave space. We, so what I do is I'm not real rigid in my life. When I'm getting drawn towards something, I move towards it. And I may want it, but I understand if I don't get it, it wasn't about getting it. It was about moving towards it to get something else. So every movement that you make in your life, when you're being magnetically pulled in a certain direction, you should walk it. But just don't overly attach to the end goal of it that you want from it. Allow God to give you what you need from the path as opposed to dictating what you want to get from the path. And if you can do this, you can decrease suffering. And you can allow the path to nourish you in an organic manner, manner rather. And that's what happened to you, isn't it? When you had your crash and you lost everything, talk to us about how that felt, what it was like to lose everything. And then that process that you went through where you've blossomed, you found your path. You know, what was that process that you went through? It was very scary, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. I had no idea what I was doing. I was lost, you know? So with that being said, when you feel lost, I don't want people to think that that's a negative thing either. When you're feeling lost, just, just think about feeling lost as a blank canvas, right? Of an opportunity to paint whatever you want to paint on the blank canvas. So when you're, if you're an artist and you have a blank canvas, you let the inspiration inspire you to paint something on the canvas. So when I lost everything, all I had was just me. What did I do? I was inspired to share the insights I was getting inside of myself. That was me painting on the canvas, the inspiration to share. So another person who may have everything stripped away from them, they may be inspired to express in a whole completely different way, whatever their path is. So the only way you can get to the root of who you truly are is to really strip away everything from yourself or in most cases, the universe will strip everything from you. Just like COVID is doing this right now. COVID is stripping everybody's idea of themselves away from them because the universe is giving us all the opportunity to start off with a brand new canvas so we can paint the way we want our world to look. But a lot of us are being stuck in fear because we're outside of our comfort zone. I don't know what to do. Fear is part of it though, right? The unknown, you don't know what to do. There's going to be fear there. But if you understand that this is an opportunity to sit with yourself and reevaluate your entire life, reevaluate who you are, what are you, what are you passionate about? What are you really here for? This can be the beginning stages of you discovering a beautiful part of yourself that you never knew existed because you were so caught up in working jobs and being socialized and social and doing all these running around. Now you're forced to sit with yourself because God wants you to find and discover your true potential. Mm. We're going through a collective dark night of the soul. That's what COVID is. So you can look at it as a tragedy and, oh my God, the world is messed up. Or you can say, wow, this is an opportunity for me to start from scratch and rebuild from a more organic place. And it is really scary, isn't it? I'm just thinking the amount of times, you know, maybe I've sat in front of a, an empty canvas or a page because I'm a writer going, I, I don't know what to paint. Mm -hmm. And I can get, you know, I'm just speaking of myself here, I can get really like, um, oh, I want to paint something that looks really good or, you know, I want it to be a certain thing that I'm trying to put on the canvas or I'm running to convey a certain message. And, and I got nothing sometimes. And it's just, and actually, to be honest, that doesn't happen very often, like completely nothing. But the, I know that a lot of people are in that stage of, okay, well, the canvas is blank or it's becoming blanker as things are, are leaving their life. You know, a perception of loss is happening, loss of an old way of being or a loss of identity or a loss of what, you know, health or whatever, rights, uh, freedom, lots of losses going on. Uh, maybe loss of, of relatives and loved ones who have passed over for whatever reason. And so in that space of loss, it can be really hard. The inspiration doesn't always come immediately, does it? It's like there's a, 
it's like you said, you've got to sit with yourself. You have to kind of go deeper and perhaps really go and look at that fear. Go and look at the emotions, feel the emotions of loss and grief and allow yourself to go through the process. Because if you're just immediately, okay, I've lost everything, right? Let me go. Let me just go and create something new. I feel like something really valuable got missed out. And I know that you didn't miss out on that value when you went through your loss, that dark night of the soul, because like you said, you sat with yourself, you meditated, you, you really met you, right? And isn't that fundamental? If you want to know why you're here, you first of all have to know who you are. Right, right. Right? If you want to create something yeah. bigger, you got to put some, some roots in place inside. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think, you know, a lot of us have allowed so many other people to dictate what we do in our lives. You should be yeah. a doctor. You should be this. You should be that. But now that people are being stripped away from everything, it's giving, it's almost like people are for the first time in their lives, they're reevaluating the decisions they've been making. Mm -hmm. And it's making them really look deeper. And I want to go to what you're talking about because I'm a writer as well. So I remember a long time, I've been a writer for most of my life, but an older version of me, when I would write, it would be very mental. Right? I'm going to say something like that. I want to say this. And, and, and I would be very mental with the process. This version of me now, it's not a mental process at all when I write. Um, well, it's a mental process in the edit. But while I'm writing, I get inspiration and I feel words come in my soul. I feel them. And I just start typing and it and it starts to make sense. Mm -hmm. And it just it's just a it's it's an energetic representation of inspiration that just naturally flows out of me and it just comes and I feel it. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm a better writer than I was back then from writing from a place of an organic expression of what's happening inside of me energetically. And then I use my mind to edit and restructure to tighten it up. But the initial ideas that come now is a complete feeling. And all, all of us, no matter what we're doing, whether we're a carpenter, a writer, a teacher, a singer, a producer, if you do your work from a place of an organic giving from here instead of here, whatever you do will be felt deeper within whoever you're giving it to, right? Because you can speak from an intellectual point of view and it may bring you insight, but I'll give you an example. I can use Jimi Hendrix, Jimi Hendrix again. If you would have put Jimi Hendrix, who I believe is the greatest guitar player of all time, against someone who was a trained guitarist, you would feel Jimmy more than you would feel the trained guitarist. Why? Because Jimmy's not playing from a place of training, which is a mental process. Jimmy is playing from a place of feeling. That's why he sounds so much more different than everybody else. And that's the difference. And if you're a singer, if you're singing from the heart, People are going to feel you more than a trained singer that sings from here, from training. Mm -hmm. So no matter what you do, if the foundation of what you do comes from here, mm -hmm. you will be felt more by everybody, no matter what it is. You will be considered <laughs> a genius. Yeah, and uh, you're giving, really. You're giving the gift that was given to you giving it presence, giving it nurture, giving it attention, and then you're giving it to everyone else. And to me, that giving, that really unconditional giving, because the logic's not engaged, the mind's not engaged, the ego's not engaged, you're just free flow giving, like however it sounds, however it comes out, you don't even know until it comes out of your mouth what you're gonna say next, you don't even know what you're gonna paint or sing or create or whatever, or that, the thing that you're gonna do next, because it will be an inspired action of some kind, it feels to me when I feel into what it means to me to be in a divine masculine energy as opposed, and I use that term as opposed to dysfunctional old 
paradigm, just, you know, masculine that's just lopsided, that it's mm -hmm. not engaging with feeling, it's not engaging in that feminine, you know, and it's polarized in that, you know, dysfunctional state of being um, where it is calculated and it is controlling and it is ordered and it's, you know, stif it can be really stifling. And so I feel like as a, a man in, in today, um, what you're sharing, I feel like it's really hopeful, not just hopeful, it's a really beautiful message and you're a beautiful kind of um, example, a representation of how men, how our, how our inner masculine and how male masculines can, you know, um, show up differently, operate differently in a more integrated, balanced whole way and that's what I love about you and I found um, Jason I was watching Iconic Media um, I'm friends with the guys at Iconic and my dear friend Christiane Van Wyck who's been on my show many times and some of my viewers will remember her um, she was interviewing you and you were talking about love and you were talking about you know when people think that you're crazy and you're not really and you know all these kind of cool things and and you were talking about feelings and I was just like this this guy needs to be seen. Like, I love that you're, what you're sharing can be heard by more people and more men, essentially. Because a lot of the talk around, you know, the divine feminine or realms and, you know, as we all develop that divine feminine nature in ourselves to feel, to intuit, to be more nurturing and more sensitive and mm -hmm. allow all of that. There's a lot of women are like, well, where are the men? You know, what's happening? You know, why haven't they caught up? That kind of you know, feeling uh, has been quite prevalent really in the last few years with all of this these spiritual development and, and world changing situations. And Jason, I, I just really want to honor you for that. I really want to thank, thank you that, um, well, it's, I don't know if it's courage or maybe it's just love. It's just your service. It's your giving, your innate can't help it give uh, essence because you've, found what works and then you're just giving it and I really love that about you so thank you for doing that thank you for being a man and representing the men and, and doing this you know in our community and being that example thanks I thanks I appreciate now I want to say, this. say that when we're talking when we're about talking about divine, divine master, master. Master, okay yeah now when we engage in spiritual activities most of the spiritual activities are based in the feminine energy, feeling, intuition, things of that nature, right? But here's what we have to understand. Women who are embracing their divine feminine, feminine energy and, and, and cultivating that, here's what we have to understand, I'm gonna share on both sides. You also have to cultivate your divine masculine inside of you as well. Because if you're a woman and you're only cultivating your divine feminine energy and you're not cultivating your masculine, your divine masculine energy, you won't be able to meet men. On See, you, you meet us on the bridge of the masculine energy, right, inside of you. And me as a man cultivate my divine masculine energy, but I also cultivate my divine feminine energy. And now I can meet you on the bridge so we can meet in the middle. So what I mean by that is this. Women who are watching this, who are into spirituality, I need you to understand this. When you are in a relationship with a man, if you haven't cultivate, cultivated your divine masculine energy, it's going to be hard for you to connect with him on the logical level that he needs you to connect on. And if the man doesn't cultivate his feminine energy, it's going to be hard to, to connect with his woman on the emotional end. So we need to be able to connect with each other from the opposite ends of the spectrum. I need my woman to be able to understand my logical point of view. And she needs me to understand her emotional point of view. And if we can both do that, we can come together and compromise and create something that benefits both of our points of view. So as a man, I can't just force women just to see everything logically. That doesn't make sense because women see the world through the lens of more emotions. But you as a woman, you can't expect me to just show up all emotionally because we see primarily the world through the lens of logic. So if we could understand that, 
and understand that there needs to be a balance and we have to use the opposite end of the spectrum as the bridge for us to meet each other there, then we can start to build relationships, communities, families, communities that are more balanced because we have to honor the masculine and the feminine, you know? Mm -hmm. we have to both. It can't be one-sided. Hallelujah. It's a bit like asking your right hand to operate like your left hand and exactly. asking your left hand to operate like your right hand. You're going to miss each other, right? You need the right and the left mm -hmm. to meet here, to meet in the middle, to meet in the heart. Yes. And not try and change the other one. I, I love what you said there. I totally relate to it. I wrote a book thinking I wrote it from my partner at the time. And it was uh, it's called I Love You Me. And it was about self-love. And I was like, if only he could love himself and forgive himself. And then he would, you know, heal. And then we could have our relationship and everything would be peachy. And <laughs> like anything, when you, you have an intention like that, it kicks you in the backside. And, um, and uh, yeah, we ended up breaking up. I was devastated. But then I was rewriting the book or, or, you know, structuring it, like you said, bringing in my brain. And, and I had to read the whole thing again. And when I read it, I was like, oh, this is for me. <laughs> I'm trying to push my thing on my man. And it's actually for me. Take my own medicine. Give myself what I'm looking for and let him do him. And he did him and I did me. And totally, like you said, like develop my own inner masculine going, well, I need structure. I need order. How do I do that? Oh, my God. I, I don't know what that looks like. That's scary. That's weird. That's difficult. Develop. I'm glad that you said that. I'm glad because what you just said is very important because I noticed this in spiritual circles. A lot of women don't understand that you need to develop some of your structure. You need to develop that part of yourself a little a little bit. You have to just like we have to develop our emotional nature. Women have to develop their logical nature that deals with structure. You know, of course. I'm primarily masculine, but I play in the feminine not feminine a lot because I'm an artist. You know, but I'm gonna be honest with you. I actually came to a deep revelation like recently. Like there was still parts of me that was expecting women to see things through the logical lens in certain ways, and it finally because I got counseling, you know, and I was finally shown how to see from a woman's perspective through the lens of emotions. It finally clicked. And I realized a lot of times I was expecting women to still see things through a logical lens when they were not looking at it through a logical lens. So what I mean by this is now I'm, a, I'm in a place where I have a deeper understanding about how women see the world. So I can understand how a woman can feel emotionally about something, even if it's not logical. But instead of me demeaning it and saying, that doesn't make sense, I can say, well, I understand why you feel that way. How but did me, you get that, Jason? How? <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I actually just got here. In my last relationship that ended the beginning of this year, I was getting, we were, because, all relationships, when you're in a relationship with someone, whether it's romantic, business, friendship, you're going to trigger parts of each other that need to be balanced. Whatever I trigger in you, there's some truth in there. I may, it may, I may go over the top with it, but there's some truth in there. Whatever you trigger in me, it may not be all over you, but there's some truth in there. So the goal is, what am I triggering you within you that needs to be balanced? And what are you triggering within me that needs to be balanced? And if we can show up in all relationships and that understanding, instead of being defensive when the triggers come, we could take that as an opportunity to look, okay, I'm triggered. Where's the imbalance? They're trying to show me where something is imbalanced. Where is that? So that's what was happening in my last relationship. I was being triggered and I was like, okay, I'm going to work on, and I started balancing out. I realized parts of myself that was imbalanced and I started changing my actions to rebalance things. And then I got counseling because I said, let's just let's get counseling. And when I got the counseling, the counselor showed me, Jason, you're expecting her to see it from the logical lens when she's seeing it from an emotional lens. And it finally clicked. So then when we were engaged, I started to see how she was seeing things from, a, from an emotional place. So I remember um, there was a certain incident to where it didn't make sense to me why she was so mad when I've expressed myself in a certain way. But one day I came to her and I said, 
you feel this way because this happened and that make you feel like this, right? And she started crying. She said, yes. Even though oh, logically, logically, <laughs> logically, it did not make any sense, but emotionally it did. So as the divine masculine, now I understand when I'm with my woman, she may be feeling emotionally in a way that's not logical, but it's my job to allow her to feel that, but to still be a guider in the logical solution outside of emotions. Because if we're coming up with emotional solutions, it's it's gonna be chaos. So mm -hmm. this is what the masculine energy does. A conscious masculine energy recognizes the emotions without belittling it, trying to understand, get an understanding of why she's feeling that way and then guiding her in a logical way outside of emotions. Hmm. Well, now, that would be. Sorry, again. go on. No, no, go on. Sorry, I interrupted. I was going to say, as a woman, you can develop that masculine part of yourself inside of yourself to recognize when you're too emotional and to let your masculine come in and ground you with logic and not react with the emotions. And the same thing's me, because we get emotional too. When a man gets over emotional and becomes unconscious, that's. Uh, unconscious feminine representation of yourself. So mm -hmm. if I'm unconscious, it's my job to not react with the emotions, sit with it and feel it, calm down, and then respond. If I react in the emotions, I'm going to cause chaos. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, most men who can't even tap into their intuition and their feminine nature, they just operate all from logic. So on the other end of the spectrum, they don't know how to show up with emotional support because they don't understand what's happening emotionally. And I was part of that in a sense too. Even with all the work I've been doing for a whole decade, I just got I just got to a point where I could understand how a woman sees things from an emotional lens. Like I just got to that point. Now I understood parts of the emotional stuff, but now it really clicked. Okay, so um, now. I'm in a position where I don't take things so personally when it shows up with mm -hmm. the emotional projection. Yeah. Now I can go into my heart and be like, I understand why you feel that way. It's okay. And just hold space for her and not take it personal. Because I used to take it personal. This makes no damn sense. Every man about? takes it personally, Jason. That's right, the right. problem. Right. They just go off the deep end. <laughs> <laughs> but then so would we, you know, on the reverse of that. Mm. It's a bit like us going to a, a man or men generally, you know. A, why are you thinking like that? Your thinking is all wrong. And your thinking is, right. is belittling me and you're putting me down because you think that you're putting me down. You're making me less. And, you know, just why don't you do this emotionally? Right, you which know, is you, far for men, and that's why I'm saying. See, if we cultivated the opposite opposite end of the spectrum within ourselves, you as a woman, if I'm coming to you where my logical view was happening, you can accept the logical view, like okay, I understand why you feel that way logically, and then I can say, well, I understand why you feel that way emotionally. Now, how can we navigate with us both understanding both sides in a way that benefits both of us? Yeah, this and be the like work. the brain and the heart yes. working together to get the job yes. done. Yes. Yes. yes, you know. Hallelujah. So it's it's very important to understand that you know. Um, mm. uh, Make more videos about that, Jason. Put it out there. <laughs> tell the guys. Tell the girls. That's really cool. And you know, it, it starts me thinking as well. So about other things that seem opposites, other people that seem opposites, whether it's a love relationship or not, you know, an intimate love relationship, whether it's masculine or feminine, don't we just love to kind of demonize what we perceive as the opposite from us? Yes. yes. What's going on with that? What's really going on with that? It's just lack of understanding. It's simply that, lack of understanding, you know? Um, in my deeper understanding, there's more wisdom now. Now I can navigate from a more calm place of understanding as opposed to a frustrating place of not understanding, you know? 
Yeah, because isn't that just fear? Like the not understanding is the not known. It's something you don't know. You don't understand it. It's dark. And therefore, quite often, well, what we're seeing a lot of right now, Jason, is people afraid. Um, people are afraid of people who've had the had the jab and then there are those who are afraid of the people that haven't had it and then there's the people who are afraid that you know i don't know it's it's everywhere right this this political party or that political party or this agenda or that agenda and it's just like everything seems to be really polarizing into opposites and then people seem to be taking a side and then demonizing the other side and what you said is like, hold on a minute. What if you just went, okay, using your logic, using your emotion, and then looking at that situation and go, huh, what's that over there triggering in me? For me, this is an opportunity to learn something. And the other side could be like, huh, that triggers me. That's an opportunity for me to learn something. Do you, can you, <laughs> do you think that people can really do that? Or do you feel like this polarization has a, a bit more of a journey to go? Like where, maybe you just talk of in, in relationships, maybe to start with, or the whole thing, you know, where do you think people are at with this? Well, in this case, I think we're talking about two different things. I'm going to explain to you why. You know, we were talking okay. about relationship format, friends, romantic business. Now, what you're talking about as far as the vaccine, <clears throat> anti-vax people and pro-vax people, now we're talking about something else. Now we're talking about um, we're talking about media's. Okay, so people have to really do some research about media, television, newspapers. Everybody who's watching, look up Edward Bernays. Okay. Say that again. Look up what? Edward Bernays. Edward Bernays. Now Edward Bernays is considered the inventor of public relations, okay? So what Edward Bernays would do is governments would hire him, companies would hire him to spin a narrative through media to program people's subconscious minds to, to support agendas, to buy products. So I'll give you an example of what he did, one of his um, campaigns. So um, Lucky Strike, the cigarette company, their packages were green way back in the 20s. So Lucky Strike wanted to sell more cigarettes because back then women didn't smoke cigarettes at first. So Lucky Strike hired Edward Bernays and said, we want to get more women to buy cigarettes. What can we do to make this happen? So this is what Edward Bernays did. He started hiring fashion designers to, to make green dresses that was that were close to the green package on Lucky Strike and would have um, them in magazines holding a cigarette with the green dresses, the same color as Lucky Strike. Then what he did, at that time, women were protesting for women's rights. So what he did is he infiltrated the whole movement and he came up with this concept called Torches of Freedom and had women smoking cigarettes to represent Torches of Freedom. Wow. One I saw this in magazines, I saw this on the news, guess what happened? Mm -hmm. A lot of women started buying cigarettes. Mm -hmm. So because of media, a lot of the choices that we make are not our own choices. We are literally funneled into buying certain products, funneled into supporting different agendas. We're not thinking for ourselves. So when someone like me says, hold on, this doesn't make sense. A whole herd of people are saying, no, you're crazy. Because they don't realize that the media that they're watching is programming, programming them to see things from one view. So that's the difference. It's like we're dealing with media, television, movies, magazines, and all these things are literally training us to choose what's hip, what's cool, what's right. Outside of our own instinct of what we feel is right or what we feel is cool. Most people who listen to music don't even really like the music they listen to. They just listen to it because it's popular. Or everyone else does. Right. That's what I, at all the music I listen to is because I like the music. I don't listen to music because everybody else does. 
So we're dealing with the culture, an inorganic culture. We're dealing with a culture that is being indoctrinated to believe things, to embrace things that has nothing to do with their own want. And I guess that's because people don't know what they want as well. Because if you've been, you know. Yeah, I think that's part of it. But also part of it is people want to be included in the group. Mm -hmm. So some people might not even like the popular songs that are out, but they're going to embrace it so they can be included in the group. Some people may not want to support a certain agenda, but they're going to support it so they can be included in the group. So it's a fear of being abandoned from the group. Yeah, but when you step into step your own power, you become more sovereign. You realize you don't need a group to feel powerful. I don't need to be a part of a group to feel to feel important. Yeah. And it's I'm to feel loved part. as well, isn't it? Like people want to be part of the group and belong because it helps them feel loved. Even if they're not really being loved at all, it gives the right. illusion that they're being loved and tries to fill a hole inside of them that actually they need to lose everything and sit with. Do they need to lose everything? But they need to sit with it, right? Sit with that hole that says, huh, what am I doing this for? Is it because I need to belong? Is it need because I need love? What do I really want? And, you know, I, I hit, totally hear what you're saying and it's completely true. And yet I'm also seeing people kind of going, well, you're not the same as me. You've done the opposite of me. You've got the opposite beliefs of me. And therefore I'm going to demonize you. I'm going to call you stupid. I'm going to call you awake. I'm going to call you a conspiracist. I'm going to call you a whatever, you know, on each side, throwing rocks at each other. Mm -hmm. I'm like, guys, don't we want peace? Don't we want more love? And even people are talking about having more love and having more peace and having more well-being whilst throwing, you know, the other side under the bus kind of thing. It's like, it's crazy. Well, you well, we have as a whole group of people who have been indoctrinated with fear. And when you're filled with fear, you attack to defend your position that you think keeps you safe. And you tackle the root of the reason why people feel like they need to be embraced by groups. It's the lack of self-love. If you have enough of your own self-love, you will not need to be embraced by groups. Mm -hmm. Group will want to embrace you. Mm -hmm. So think about that, just think about that, everyone. Just let that one land. So until you learn to love yourself, you will always need to be accepted by the popular group to feel relevant. Because without that acceptance, you feel like you're nothing, mm -hmm. which is not true. Mm. Let's take that in. It's kind of really nice to, you know, you say a lot of things and you drop a lot of love bombs, and then it's like, just let them land. Mm -hmm. Everyone breathe. Oh, take it all in. What do we really want? What we really want is to be loved for who we really are and to find fulfillment in showing up as who we really are. Because if you show up as who you really are, which is your genius self, the world gives you your flowers because they will recognize the genius in you if you allow it to come out of you. There's no way they won't be able to. And that's what you want. You want to give your genius to the world because you giving your genius to the world touches people and that will bring you fulfillment. When you show up in the world with your own unique beauty and you share it with the world, whatever it is, whether you're a cook, a nurse, whatever you love to do, whatever that part of you that you're passionate about, when you cultivate and develop that and bring that into the world, People will give you, see, validation is not a negative thing, but if you need a whole lot of validation, now we got a problem. But validation is natural. If I, if you're an artist and you make a painting, you want people to like your painting and that's okay. But if you need people to like your painting, we might have a problem. Mm -hmm. Wanting somebody to like what you do 
as opposed to needing someone to like what you do are two different things, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to create music. I want people to like my music, but if they don't, okay. I don't mm -hmm. need them to. Mm -hmm. Carry why, do I, why don't I need people to need like my music? Because I'm not creating the music for, I'm not purely creating it for you for you to like it. I'm allowing God to show up and express through me, okay? And I will get fulfillment if people like it, but I'm not solely attached to that validation. And I used to be more attached to that validation. As I grow deeper into my own power, the less validation I need. Mm -hmm. So me today, I need less validation than I might have needed two, three years ago. Because I'm coming more whole into myself, more whole into myself to where it's like, I don't need your validation. I would appreciate it, right? And that's how it should be when it comes to being in a relationship. I want you to love me, but I don't need you to love me. See, it's a difference. When you step into a relationship, I need you to love me. This is codependency. But when you step into a relationship like, I want you to love me, and I want to share my love with you. That's a different energy. Really? I've been experiencing that as well, Jason. Huh? Sorry, my friend. Say that again. When you come into a relationship saying, I want you, but I don't need you. And I come into a relationship like this. I want you, I don't need you, and I'm also here to learn from you because you're going to teach me what I need to balance within myself when you trigger me. I show up into any relationship as a student. Friendship, romantic relationship, business relationship. I come in as a student. Mm -hmm. What are you here to teach me? Humble. Because you're, you're going to trigger me. And I'm going to trigger you and I'm going to teach you. It's, it's the humility, like the love can only flow when the doors are open and we're humble, right? Yeah, you, you have to let that openness happen. That humility opens the door to love. Otherwise, you're just power battling with each other. And my partner and I, we used to really be like that. And um, I had a really good trigger recently, Jason, when... Um, I have, you know, sometimes I get like really emotional. There's things that I want in my relationship. I want my man to show up in a certain way and understand me emotionally and just, you know, not bring his logic and, you know, because he's very logical and he's passionate and emotional as well. But he, he sees my emotions as different to his emotions because <laughs> I don't know why it's still emotional. But bless him. He's, you know, he's a beautiful, really powerful, beautiful man. And sometimes I'm left like, I really just want you to understand my feelings and meet me on a feeling level and not try and change it or do anything. And one time recently, I was feeling really hurt about this. I was like, God, I just need that, right? I need that from my man. And I heard myself and I was like, hold on a minute. And I learned, again, another like deeper layer of going, okay, how can I be my own inner masculine and meet myself where I need to be met? Let my poor partner off the hook because it's not, you know, I'd have to leave him over it. I'd have to give him a hard time and beat him over the head with it. Why don't you, you know, understand where he's coming from, understand how he would see it. And for a moment, I just put my logical glasses on, like you said, or my, my, I, I kind of put myself in my partner's shoes and was like, huh, how does he feel when I do that to him? That's not very nice. It's, it belittles him. Of course, he's going to get upset. And then so how can I meet myself in that way? And I had this beautiful experience, really empowering and really emotional experience where showing up for myself and holding myself in my own emotions. And then I stopped needing him to do it for me, right, and expecting him or wanting because I didn't need it anymore. I took care of it. And now, even since then, he just shows up differently. It's like suddenly somebody changed him, but he didn't really change. It's weird, like, because I'm not putting that energetic need on him. 
which actually repels him and pisses him off because he can yes. feel yes. it, right? It's a, like men are very sensitive like that. They pick up on the slightest little thing. Your gut is going, something is not right here. Mm -hmm. um, and so because I didn't have that, then he just really, oh, my goodness, in the last week has just met me in the deepest way that he's never done before. And it's absolutely beautiful. And it's like I, I met on the bridge, you know, going back to the bridge that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. I met on the bridge. And if we can do that, if I can do that in a relationship and you can do it in a relationship, then other people can do it in their relationships. And I want to say, and I want to say this. I want to say this to all the women watching. 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 It is very, it is very important, important for you to want to understand your man's logical position, just as it is important as him to understand your emotional position. Okay, because mm -hmm. I notice a lot of women would try to dismiss the logical position too, just like a lot of men that try to dismiss the emotional position. We have to stop doing that from both ends. Mm -hmm. so she, the conversation should go like this. Okay, that's how you feel emotionally. Okay, I can I understand why you feel that way. I can see how you can feel that way. And then the woman should say, okay, I understand how you can see that from a logical perspective. Because if you can take the time to just calm down and try mm -hmm. to see it from each other's position, you may be able to actually see what they're saying as opposed to fighting for your position, for your lens. We're fighting for our lens. The logical lens is, is, is more valuable. No, the emotional lens is more valuable. No, the logical lens is more No, No, they're both valuable. It's just mm -hmm. about understanding how to navigate with both integrated. Mm -hmm. We have to stop demonizing logic and we have to stop demonizing emotions. Let's just stop demonizing. This, you know, this lovely lady, Kayless Bliss. What a nice name, Kayless Bliss. What about when a woman feels that she needs a man to protect her? I think that's, that's a problem. That's, that's a big deal. Say that again. I, I said that's a big deal. I think, you know, I feel like the there's a high feeling of need for protection. Yeah. That is a valid need. We do need to feel protected. Like you just said, it's an it's a valid need. And yet when we don't feel protected, because the world's crazy right now, right? Mm -hmm. Then what? Yeah. I mean, that's a, natural prom, that's a natural primal nature of a man, I mean, of a woman to want to feel physically protected by her man. I mean, that's nature. Um, you know, another not? thing, I'll oh, say it, I'm, would you say I'm sorry? No, what if, he's, what if he's not though? What if he's not doing that? And you love your man and you want to be with him, but he's not being protective. I know, I mean, I've, I've been be there. The right, he's not the right man for you. If, you. if you don't feel safe with your man, I mean, that's the basic primal nature. I mean, the basic primal need is not being met. If there was a bit more of that protection, that masculine protection, and not ego, I don't know, maybe the, the, the kind of dysfunctional version of that, but the real giving protect from the heart, I don't think this world will be in the place that it is right now, full stop. Right, not not the overly masculine macho protection, but like for example, like for me, you know, I'm gonna make sure I take my woman to places that are safe. I wouldn't put her in an environment that's unsafe. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Just being aware of your environment, you mm. know. And also, I experienced this with my man where. He'll tell me if I'm about to get into a business relationship or I'm about to spend money on something or, you know, I'm being really like, oh, I'm just going to go with the love and go with the flow. He's like, hold on a minute. And he'll protect me with his ability, with his logic, with his gut instinct that says mm, something not right here. And right. he does. And that's how he protects me. That's part. I, I do that as well. You know, right. so as a woman, when a man is doing that, don't take that person and try to battle with. If if your man loves you and he and he gets a gut feeling and he feels something is off, just you know consider it because he cares. You may see something you don't see. Same thing if a woman tells you something like I don't know, consider it and just mm. consider it. There may be something there. You know, because it did take me a while to realize that what he was doing was protection. 
because I thought he was just being a pain in the ass and he was just being a bully and he was just wanting me to do things his way and imposing his narrow. I used to and think that's he's how to take it. I've, I've, gotten, gotten, <laughs> I've gotten that same reaction from women. Right. So this is the, this is unevolved Tara going back like 10, 11 years ago. I was like, you know, what he's telling me to do is just he wants me to be in his version of reality and I've got a different right. version of reality you know and and I don't want to be like him mm -hmm. um, so I completely rejected him and then to him I was rejecting his basic gift that he wants to give me of protection mm -hmm. and uh, yeah so it is isn't it it's being able to actually like breathe for a second look at someone for actually question be curious what are they actually doing when they do that where are they coming from and even ask questions you know when you do that is it because this or is it because something else and, and really stay look at it because some people are controlling and their intention may be to control you and you that's know, but, true well. right but mm -hmm. you know it's up to you to really fill into the person that you're with to to feel for the intention. Where's the intention coming from? You know, um, if someone's controlling, there'll be many red flags that'll show you they're controlling. But if they're not controlling and you can see they genuinely love you, you may want to consider what they're saying. Mm. I'm going to jump back into the social now side of things as well with those red flags, Jason, because, you know, there's been a lot of red flags to the situation that we find ourselves in now, socially, globally, this situation. A heck of a lot of red flags, a, a very big lack of actual real protection. It's been over dominance, over control, suffocative, you know, um, let's call it um, dysfunctional masculine overbearing control in the patriarchal system to control everybody. So, of course, a lot of people are going to feel the need for real protection from that threat of the overprotective controlling. And I, I mean, I've throughout my life, I've been in very overbearing, over controlling relationships with men, total psychos, to be honest, you know, quite scary situations as a young woman, because I was so floaty, so love and light, I really wasn't heeding the red flags, I wasn't trusting my gut, I wasn't trusting my intuition, my instinct, I wasn't even reading the visual signs right in front of me from the actions, and I also wasn't taking the words literally, you know, that the, the men that I was with, I'm talking about my relationships now, didn't take the actual words literally. I kind of, you know, skipped over it, made it something else in my world and had a lot of problems with um, very controlling, very threatening, very scary men in my life. And so what I did with that is go, okay, I need to ground, I need to get rooted, I need to own my own energy, and I need to not be a victim of other people because I'm so floaty and I'm going, I can't handle it, I can't handle it, I'm too, you know, can't deal with this, I'll just run away, I'll just leave him. And then I would run into another guy exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So all that running didn't really get me anywhere, I just ended up back with the same position. And it's exactly like you said, it's like, I had to really learn what it means to own my own inner masculine and protect myself mm -hmm. by listening to the red flags, by seeing what's right in front of me and deciding to love myself enough to protect myself and trust my instinct and do something else instead. <coughs> and I think that's a very scary option for people because it's like, oh, what does that look like? But I want someone else to do it for me. Mm -hmm. As far as the draconian type of um, control that's happening in the world today, I actually see it as an opportunity because there's always been control, right? But I think mm -hmm. what's happening is those who are controlling are in a corner now because, because of the internet and how much information we have access to, they can't be so subtle with the way they control. Like it's all, we're seeing like their control methods are coming out into the open. They can't hide it anymore. So it's a blessing that we're able to see exactly how controlling they were from the beginning. So the reason why they're upping their control though is because it's just like when you trap an animal in a corner, a wild animal in a corner, it's fighting for its last days. 
<laughs> that, is, that, that grin on your face. <laughs> when you've been controlling for so long and you know that you're losing control, you up the control and then you expose yourself by doing that. So now what's going to happen is they're going to lose control and we're going to move into a whole new... When all of this smoke clears, we're going to be able to finally move into a new way of being, okay? But just like anything, before we can rebuild anew, what was has to die. And what's dying is not going to go out without a fight mm -hmm. because it's been controlling for so long. It's not going to just give its power away easily. It's going to fight to the end. But it's they're going to lose, and they know this. Mm -hmm. I know this. And this is why I don't fall into the doom and gloom scenarios because I know inside of myself that they're going to lose. It doesn't matter what they try. There's going to be collateral damage. It's just, we, you can't get away from it. But I'm telling you, they're going to lose. And they know they're going to lose their power. And that's why they're scared now. And trying to control in ways they never tried to control before. Because they know, they this is their mindset. We got to have complete control. Because if we don't get complete control, they're going to be able to get free. That's what's happening right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you can understand that... Just sit through, just sit in the turbulence and let it all fall. Mm -hmm. What I do is I share information to try to get people to see certain things. If you see what I'm sharing, you can see it, it's for you. If if you were saying that's stupid, Jason, then the information is not for you. I share for people who are on the cusp. I don't share for people who are completely asleep and don't want to see the reality of what's really happening. My message is not for you. My message yeah. is for people that's questioning, like, hold on, this doesn't make sense. Wait a minute. This doesn't add up with that. And I'm like, yes, now look at this. Then look at that. Because everybody who can see reality for what it really is and step into their power in this time will be the ones who will be the new leaders and new builders in the new world that's coming outside of this old and this dying. Right? And it's much like me. And the reason I shared that story about uh, past relationships I kept running into the same thing again and again until it got so bad. The, the covers were pulled from my eyes. And I was like, hold on a minute, wake up. This is a me thing. This is a me thing. What if it's the same? It's the same. What if, right? From the micro to the macro. You're talk, you were talking about from the, from the micro, just you. So if we talk about collectively the entire globe, everybody on the planet. What's happening mm -hmm. is... It's getting so bad to the point where you have to realize, okay, we have to do something different. Mm -hmm. We have to get, most people don't even realize that we were being controlled all along through media, being programmed to like this, support this agenda. Mm -hmm. I've always been the type of person where I've used my own mind. I've always, I've been like an, like an outcast because I see things differently. I don't just fall in line because everybody else falls in line. I question with my own mind. I'm like, hold on. This doesn't make sense though. But see, when the more self-love you have inside of yourself, the more you trust yourself. Because see, self-love comes with trust, right? But guess what? If you don't have self-love, you don't trust your own way of thinking. You're going to go with the herd because you're like, I don't trust my own self. So I'm going to go where everybody else is thinking because I don't trust myself because I don't love mm -hmm. myself. But see, I love myself and I'm confident in my ability to think for myself. And if I'm wrong, I'll say I was wrong and I'll repivot mm -hmm. in a minute and change my position. <laughs> repivot in a minute. <laughs> Pivot in a minute, right? So minute. that's another thing. Most people are afraid to think for themselves because they're afraid to be wrong. I'm not afraid to be wrong. Mm -hmm. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. If you prove me wrong, I'm glad you did because you're putting me on the right path. Mm. We're afraid to be wrong. We don't trust ourselves. We don't love ourselves. So what we do is we allow the media, celebrities, and all these people that we worship to guide us along a path that we don't even really want to walk. But we feel like I don't know how to walk for myself, so I don't know where to walk, so lead me. 
No, you need to figure out where you want to walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a bit like asking your abuser to protect you and look after you and guide you. As exactly Because people, we become so, well, I, I wouldn't say me personally, uh, ever, actually, because I was just born outside of the system anyway, generally, you know, massively. But people have become so dependent on the patriarchal system of order and institution and governments and this control and that control and this legislation and that rule and it's just got so freaking tight and narrow and now people are so trapped in it and there's no freedom they can't move in it but there's a codependency and it's a bit like still asking your abuser for help and it's asking your abuser for the for the love or for the protection that you are craving and it's really it's like it's like when you you know coming back to your accident where listen to the little voice that's talking to you otherwise some kind of crash in life is going to happen something's going to put you on your backside so that you can go oh hold on a minute i need to come back to me sit in stillness sit with yourself just like you did even if it's weird and uncomfortable and you don't really know how to do it yet but you just stay there and little by little i think if we want to build a new world or we, we, of course we want a new world, one without all of this. We first have to kind of fill in the gap, right? And learn to be, learn to develop our own inner masculine that is lovingly protective, not suffocative. That's, yes. you know, not controlling, right. but guiding. Right. But it's kind of the same, right? Yes, this is why, you know, um, for the past 10 years of my life, I was developing the monk. I went on a pilgrimage. I was doing all inner work, spiritual work with people, right? When my son was born, he activated the king in me, which represents, the monk represents the feminine part. The king represents the masculine part. So now I'm merging the monk and the king. So see, if you become a king without developing the monk, you'll be a dictator. You will be controlling. I have no desire to control, but I know that I have the potential, I don't want to say potential, I am one of the new leaders and one of the new kings that everything I do is for the people, not for me. What I teach is for the people. My ideas of what I want to build is for the people, for us, right? I don't want to be controlling at a dictator. What I want to do is bring understanding onto the table, principles that we can use where we can create a society and a culture that's balanced, the return of Mayat, which is a hermetic term for balance. You know, we've had ancient civilizations that has that have lived in this way, that understood the balance between the masculine and feminine principles and how to integrate both within culture, within family, within religion, within life in general. We're going back to that. Everything that's going away now is leading to Mayat. We're going to create new cultures, new societies, with this understanding. And this is what people who are in control are trying to fight against, but they can't stop nature. It's nature. Their time is up. We're going into a new cycle, okay? There's nothing they can do. They want to spray stuff in the sky to block the sun. They want to do all these, they want us to inject the stuff on our bodies to make our cells create diseases. There's nothing they can do to stop what's coming. Nothing. So everybody is watching this program. Cut off the news. Come into yourself. Cultivate yourself. Cultivate your self-love. Work on yourself. Work on your inner world. Work on your outer world. Inner world, self-mastery, self-love. Outer world, learn how to invest and build wealth so you don't depend on this banking system. Learn how to develop both sides of yourself. If you're a woman, develop your nun and your queen. If you are a man, develop your monk and your king. So you can show up in this new world with a balanced version of power. So you can move powerfully in the world in a balanced way that's not destructive. Sending that out, Jason. Let's magnify that one. Put it out there. Ding. 
Amen. So going forward into 2022, one of my goals is to start creating a new culture, literally, with music, with schooling, with everything that's based on the root principle of balance. I was going to ask you that to wrap up. I was going to say, okay, so if you could have a wish, you know, your real desire for whatever it is, your greatest desire, what does that look like? Is that create, community create, center? Is it a new culture for humanity where my son can grow up within a culture that under has understanding, that has mm -hmm. compassion, that has vision, mm -hmm. that has love. Mm -hmm. that has balanced power mm -hmm. for all people. Yeah. Let's all take that in because I'm sure you speak for a lot of people. That's exactly, that's what I call new earth. I've been, mm -hmm. I felt exactly the same when my sons were born 20 years ago. It's my youngest, he's going to be 20 in a, about 10 days, nine days. I felt like that when he was born. It was like, Everything needs to be new. Mm -hmm. And I want to put my kids in the system. Don't want to put my kids through that kind of, you know, grinding stone till there's just nothing left of them. Something new. And now is the time. I was a bit early. Everything was still in the destruction phase. It hadn't got as bad, yeah. so it wasn't destroyed. Now is the time. Now is the time. And a lot of people keep trying to fight for something positive within the current system. That's not the way. You have to create something outside of it. Mm -hmm. It's too toxic. It's cancerous. You can't save. This culture is dying. You can't save it. Let it die. Mm -hmm. It's time to create a new culture, which will create a new society and a new global network. It's going to happen. People could think that this is some woo-woo crazy stuff that I'm saying, but I can guarantee you, all of these controlling powers are falling right now. They're going to fall. And you're going to see people like me, you, are going to step up to the plate to rebuild on top of the rubble. It's going to happen. That's exactly it. And so I know that you have to go, and we've been talking for well over an hour now. And, um, you know, you start talking about death, and that's another subject I wanted to get into because people are freaked out about letting things die or dying. And that's right. part of the reason we're in this mess in the first place. Right. But that will have to wait for another self love talk. So maybe it'll be with Jason. Maybe I'll get a whole bunch of us together and we'll talk about death okay. because I put a post up about it today on Facebook and uh, people, it, it hits home. And so I'm like, okay, maybe this is something we need to kind of dive into a bit more. So I might invite you back to talk about how to let things die and uh, what death's all about, Jason. But for this evening, I want to thank you for being an absolutely beautiful, shining, guiding light and a wonderful guest and a wonderful man. And can you let people know where they can find you? How do they get hold of you? Yes, you can find me on Instagram. My tag is um, at Little Sun and the Rays. And I'm on Facebook as well, Jason Hairston Little Son, YouTube, Jason Hairston Little Son. You can find all my content. So when you say at Little Son and the Rays, you mean and like the sun rays? Yes. Yes. And the rays, is it like a, a, a squiggle and an and or is it an A and D? That's all together. Um, all at together. put it in the below. Sun, huh? I'll put it, we'll put it in the below. I'll put it in the description below. But for those guys now who are listening on live with us, thanks for joining us live, by the way, guys. Thanks for your comments. Jason's cool, isn't he? Who knew about Jason before today? Because I only recently discovered him on the Iconic Media interview, like I said. And it's like, it's cool to have you in my in my circuit now to like, I can go, ah, Jason's my guy for this. <laughs> but some more masculines in the in the space so i'm really really grateful to have you here and uh, everyone's really happy and grateful for you as well some beautiful comments go find jason on instagram give him some love go find jason on youtube give him some love please give this video some love um lots of love and share it so that more people can meet jason and, and find out what he's up to and yeah let's go and create that and if you want to create the new culture with jason why not just drop him a little note you know get together team up all right. Loads of love, everybody. Any final words, Jason? Uh, it was a pleasure, Tara. I really appreciate you bringing me on your platform. 
And um, yeah, so everybody that's watching with this COVID-19 stuff, look, just just focus on you and your family and your inner world and, and focus on being the best you so you can prepare when the smoke clears, you can step out of the smoke being the best you and be one of the rebuilders. Yay. All right. God bless you. Loads of love to you. Good night. God bless everybody. Loads of love and see you next time. Bye.